Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Midnight Eastern Daylight Time on the uh, let's see here on the left coast of the uh, on the right coast of the United States of America. Hi, how are you? Uh, so uh, 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 we go here for another week of uh, wonderful programming here at GabNet, and uh, uh, in a little bit we're going to go to our citizen panel, which should be a rousing citizen panel tonight, considering a lot of things. Um, I, first of all, I want to start off by saying that I am sick and tired of one particular phrase uh, because every time we hear it, it has less and less meaning because in spite of the fact that you sincerely believe this phrase, uh, you don't really believe it enough to stop saying it. And that term and the thing that people say all the time is thoughts and prayers. And I get bothered by thoughts and prayers because, quite frankly, I think it's easier to say thoughts and prayers for the death of someone, especially someone who has died unexpectedly in some kind of violent action, than to do something about it. Oh, hey, we'll just keep saying thoughts and prayers. And then thoughts and prayers becomes the new normal. All right? I don't want to say thoughts and prayers anymore. Because, uh, quite frankly, I think they are hollow gestures to people who are suffering. And, uh, I, you know, I kind of remember when my father died, uh, and then uh, my, my mother died. In both cases, I, I, I kind of got tired with people coming up to me and saying things like thoughts and prayers. Okay? Our, our thoughts are with you. We're so sorry for your loss. Okay? All of them hollow gestures because you, for lack of anything really warm to say, you come up with that one because that's just what we say. And so we're constantly, over and over again, finding ourselves saying thoughts and prayers. I'm watching uh, Lester Holt over there at uh, NBC, and uh, he's talking about these, and our thoughts and prayers go out to the people of, and then fill in the place where it happened. Um, hollow gestures, hollow gestures, uh, uh, signifying nothing uh, and doing nothing because simply giving these hollow gestures out as your, your way of trying to solve a really ugly problem without actually going on to trying to solve that ugly problem are, is, is a hollow gesture at best. I guess what I'm saying is we just went through this, and we went through a double dose of it, actually a triple dose. So you've got to remember that a week ago uh, this Saturday, uh, a gunman went into this uh, garlic festival in Gilroy, which I'm very familiar with. I've never been to it, but I always swore I was going to go to the garlic festival in Gilroy. And I always kept kidding about it. Gee, what would it be like to live in Gilroy when uh, really what you have to say about Gilroy is, hey, it's the garlic capital of the world. Well, somebody, got, somebody went in there and he, um, he shot up the place. I think it killed four people, right? Eh, small potatoes, you know. Just another one of those, those shootings that goes on. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers to all the families out there in Gilroy who are affected by this. Thoughts and prayers. Feel better now? Huh? Eh, your loved one is still dead. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are thoughts and prayers out here, and that's got to make you feel really good, right? You'd probably feel better if you had that loved one back, wouldn't you? So anyway, uh, we had this thing at the Garlic Fest. 
And you figure, okay, well, that's it for a while. And you, you're, you're abhorred by what went on. You said, I think it was four dead. And you go, four dead, uh, that's horrible, you know. Uh, and uh, next, on Saturday, guy goes into a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, which is a 85% Hispanic city. I believe it's 85% is the population there. And a lot of the people who do their shopping in El Paso actually come over the border from Mexico to shop in El Paso. They're Mexican citizens. Isn't it interesting that our president is trying to close down a border by building a wall, and yet we allow people every weekend to come in from Mexico to go shopping at Walmart? I mean, come on. You know, I, I, that's the part that got to me. Not that I don't think they should come and have the right to come into Walmart, but apparently Mexicans can come into the United States just by saying, I'm shopping, okay? So, I mean, why do you want to build the wall? Anyway, goes into the Walmart with a semi-automatic uh, uh, rifle, an AK-47, I believe it was. I don't know. I'm not familiar. that familiar with guns and don't care to be. And he shot up the place and killed uh, what now the current count is 22 people. And they're still counting because there's some people in intensive care who may not pull through. But it's, it's 22. And I think it was 26 injured. Uh, he just went in there and he just started blah, 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 blah. And in this particular case, it was a guy who drew, came all the way from, uh, McAll is it McAllen, Texas, or is Allen, Texas? Uh, uh, somebody from Texas can clear this up for me, but I think it was McAllen is the town. Uh, he drove, I think it was 80 miles, maybe more than that, to El Paso in order to just go into this Walmart that he knew was filled with Mexicans, okay, uh, and start shooting up the place. And he did a pretty good job because most of the people who died were Mexicans. I think some of the, like six of them, seven of them were actually Mexican citizens. Uh, and um, uh, he, he left behind a manifesto, which we'll talk about. There's, a lot of these guys leave manifestos behind, okay? Uh, but this guy uh, uh, had a particular gripe against uh, uh, Mexicans. Yeah, yeah, and we'll tell you about that in a second, because he left a manifesto saying how much he disliked Mexicans and how he felt they were uh, taking over the United States and uh, and so forth. But I, I don't want to, in a way, I don't want to get into that that much because what we're doing is while the guy has admitted it and while he said you got me, and they hauled him off to jail, he still has to be tried. And I uh, and we know damn well, you know what's going to happen. He's going to be found guilty because he said I did it anyway. It, you know, he just he walked out of the Walmart, put his hands up, and they took him away. Um, but I don't want to get into this kind of thing where we presume guilt because I think that that goes against our American sensibilities of the presumption of innocence and still proven the opposite in a court of law, which will be very easy in this case, okay? Uh, I'm probably being a bit naive by taking the approach that I'm taking, but somehow I still have this feeling in me that I still want what last vestige of being an American is all about to remain in me, all right? So uh, he, uh, he shoots up the place and uh, more people dead. Well, now we're we're bothered by this. I mean, he got our attention. 22 people dead, that's a pretty good body count, okay? That gets your attention, all right? Uh, uh, is it time to say thoughts and prayers? Probably it's time to say thoughts and prayers, but it's still a hollow gesture, okay? Now we come to, what is it, Saturday night? This was Saturday afternoon. Saturday night, uh, or might have been Sunday, one or the other, I, I can't remember. I haven't got it here right now. I built, but it was, it was, I think it was, it was a bar in a part of uh, of uh, uh, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, that is a you know, it's a place where people go to get drinks and have food and so on. And a guy goes in there, and he has a AK-47 or something akin to that. 
and uh, he shoots up the place, and he kills nine people, including his sister. Now, they don't know yet whether he knew that was his sister or not, or whether that was the reason he started shooting in the first place, but they, they, they have a hard time with this one because the police, to their credit, you know, um, I don't know if the New York police could be this good. Uh, the Dayton police were at this venue within 30 seconds and so they were able to stop the shooter within 30 seconds. But during that 30 seconds, he killed nine people. Now we got a body count on the weekend of, uh, what, 31 people so far? Yeah, yeah. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. I'm going to sneeze here in a moment, so please don't mind if I do. But I, for some reason, there's something I'm allergic to in this room, and it's probably doing a program. Uh, okay. Now all hell breaks loose around the country, the reaction to it. Um, people on the left, like myself, are, are yelling and screaming, you know, it, what does it take to get some kind of gun legislation in this country? Um, and then there are the people on the right saying, oh, well, you know, this isn't, this isn't, it, it, it's not, not peep, it's not the guns that kill people, it's the people with the gun who kill people. But they fail to remember that somehow that guy was able to have a gun, you know. So, I mean, considering there are those crazy people out there, uh, shouldn't we maybe not sell guns at all? But, you know, I'm, I'm a, a liberal and a lefty, and uh, you expect that out of me. And I fully expect the, the people on the other side to make an excuse for why it wasn't the guns, it was the person with the gun. But somehow I just can't help but think in my thoughts and prayers that all those people wouldn't be dead if there wasn't a gun. And if it was just a crazy person standing there, he, all he would have done was start ranting, you know? Anyway, it, you know... Uh, all hell breaks loose in the media, and now, now the really tasteless part of this thing starts to go into action. Uh, Monday, you tune in to the 6.30 News, and there is Lester Holt standing in front of the Walmart anchoring the evening news. Now, that's bad enough, because what the fuck is Lester Holt being in El Paso going to do to improve the situation? Uh, I remember when in an entirely different and less volatile situation, the San Francisco earthquake, Loma Prieta in 1969, when we were descended upon in the, in the marina by the press, and in fact there was this whole area where there were nothing but satellite trucks set up, and there were cameras, people sticking microphones in our faces and things like that, and... and um, you know, we, I kind of felt then that, you know, come on, leave us alone. You know, we've got a problem here. We don't need you people doing this. The only, the only good part about that was I'm walking down the street back to my apartment, which is now, you know, some semi-rubble. And um, as I'm walking towards my apartment, who's walking right towards me but Tom Brokaw? who was anchoring his newscast from the corner. And he looks at me and says, how's it going? And I went, not too good. He says, I want to wish you a lot of luck. This is terrible. And he moved on. But he's very nice about it. But it's that presence of the press that only makes the situation worse. And now Lester Holt is there. What, is he, what do they think Lester Holt is going to be able to do? for this story, that a reporter already there can't do and report back to him while he's sitting at his anchor desk in New York. And the only reason they send him out there is to make him look like he's a seasoned veteran reporter, which he's really not, and to get a couple of points in saying, well, we're there. So because they're there, so as I'm, I didn't watch the other newscast, but I would imagine it's true, so were, uh, 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 ABC and CBS. I'm sure they had their anchors doing it because they don't want to be left out. And they're wondering, they, they're saying, what will the public think of us if we're not there? Well, maybe they'll think you're not, you know, like sitting there and giving everybody a, 
a bad time by, you know, asking him stupid questions. Now what gets even worse, and this is the part that just galls me, it was enough that I wrote NBC about it. They start sticking microphones in people's faces who have a dead loved one. And they say, what do you think? And the people start talking. Of course they're going to start talking because a microphone is in their face. They're, they're used to this in America, just like they're used to the shootings. And they start talking, and then they start crying, and then they start breaking down. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was there, and I was a cameraman, and somebody started crying like that, I would simply turn off my camera. Because I would not wish to have this person in their most miserable state being exploited by my television network. And as I sat there, I watched this, and I just got incensed. How can you do this to these people? And then, you know, they start crying, and rather than say, well, thank you so very much, you know, and, and turning it off, they just sit there and just let them keep crying and let them keep getting worse and worse. And I saw this on like about two or three occasions on one newscast on NBC that night. And I went, you know, do you really think what you're doing is worth it? You know? No, it's not worth it, okay? Um, it, it is, it, it's exploitative of, of misery. And that's what these networks deal in. And I wrote, the, I wrote them a letter and said, how dare you? I said, you know, of course, you know, they're not going to pay any attention to it. Oh, some kook named Alex Bennett is writing us here. Somebody goes, oh, I know that name. He's an out-of-work talk show host. He's probably bitter. You know. No, I just felt that these people were being exploited, and it was terrible. It was just terrible. And I didn't watch all the other networks because Girlfriend Likes to Watch Lester who I think is the most useless human being on the planet. But anyway, you know, I, that was happening. The, uh, and then all the, uh, uh, then the politicians come online, and they, you know, the ones that are running for president, of course, are incensed by what's going on. And uh, then you got guys like, uh, 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 like, uh, you know, who's the head, uh, head of the Senate, uh, what's his name, Moscow, whatever his name is. Uh, he, uh, you know, he, he just doesn't say anything. And uh, uh, it, it's just, and, and some politicians were trying to parse the situation. But here's the bottom line of it all. And I, you know, uh, I, I say this to anybody who is for Donald Trump. How can you be for him now? Now that you see what his bad behavior has wrought, now you're saying, oh, well, it isn't his fault. The manifesto, this guy in El Paso, uh, the El Paso shooting, guy from, I think, McAllen, Texas, in his manifesto was quoting Donald Trump about how the Mexicans are invading America and blah, 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 and he was using all the talking points that our dear president has been tweeting for the better part of his, well, since he started running for president. Um, when you see that that happened, it goes back to what I have talked about before. You know, when you're in a position, like I am, on the air here saying things, I have to make sure that when I'm saying my opinion about something, that I'm not giving people a sense of permission as it were, to go out and uh, uh, shoot up some people, that I'm not giving them a sense of permission that bad behavior will be tolerated. But this president has, on a regular basis, he has given a sense of permission. And I think if for one moment you think that those deaths that went on in El Paso are not partially, or maybe in a large part, the fault of Donald Trump, then you're, you're, you're really blind to the truth. Because the fact is that whatever this guy thought he was accomplishing, he used as his sense of permission to do it the words of the President of the United States.
Now, Trump then goes on on uh, Monday, I think it was, yeah, Monday. He gives a speech. It's all on a teleprompter. They put the teleprompter straight ahead this time so that he looked like he was looking at you when he was reading it, but he still sounded like he was reading it. It was kind of like, you ever notice when there were kids in school who didn't really want to recite in front of the class and they did it anyway, so they did it perfunctorily? Uh, uh, that's what it seemed like. He was reading off a, off a, off a teleprompter. Um, and uh, as I've said before, he is the absolute um, example of the saying that if you can't be sincere, at least fake it, you know. And he does a bad job of faking it because he doesn't understand how to be sincere because he doesn't have an empathetic bone in his fucking body. Well, he gets up there, he gives his speech. Now, here's how, here, here's, you all know what happened. Uh, at the end of the speech, he sent out his thoughts and prayers to the people of El Paso and the people of Toledo, Ohio. What was wrong with that? I mentioned it earlier. Those people were shot in Dayton, Ohio, not Toledo, Ohio. And you say, well, how, well maybe, maybe he just did that by mistake. No, he didn't. He was reading the fucking teleprompter. Where the mistake came from is someone who wrote the speech or put it up on the teleprompter put in the word Toledo instead of Dayton, and when he read it, he didn't know the difference and look at it and go, well, that's wrong, and not say Toledo. He would have said Dayton, but he wasn't paying attention because he didn't give a shit. He was only trying to save his ass from the people like me who are going to accuse him of giving a sense of permission to the guy at the, at the Walmart in El Paso. Um, you know, I mean, I, I just don't, I, I just don't understand it. And I, and I, and I, I was telling Marjorie yesterday that I would have given the president some props if he had said, you know, he did this whole speech where he talked about the internet and how the internet spreads this kind of hate and so on and so forth. And of course, who was the major user of the internet to spread this kind of thing with tweets but Donald Trump. I would have given him, I, I would have given him some real credit if just at, at that time he said, and you know, I should probably re-examine my actions as well. I mean, if you're asking all Americans to examine themselves and examine America, I, I think he should have the same kind of introspection about himself. And had he said that, I would have gone, you know, maybe, maybe I've been wrong. Maybe Donald Trump isn't as bad as he was. But he is as bad as I think he is. He may be even worse, okay? Um, so where are we? Uh, we're in a nation that is afraid to send its kids to school doesn't want to shop at Walmart for fear of death or even going to Costco, that may be the next one, or a bar on the weekend or a movie theater somewhere because all these places are the soft targets that are now being used by people who somehow have read the Trump creed and read the Trump uh, Twitter posts and tweets and decided that, hey, he was going to do his part. I guess the final thing on this is, and they've shown this clip over and over and over again. The president was in Florida a couple of months ago, and uh, he was saying, you know, and they're invading our country. He was on that screen. Uh, they're invading our country. And some guy, uh, and what, what should we do? And some guy from the audience yelled out, shoot them. And Trump kind of laughed a little bit, and he went, no, 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 no. Only in the panhandle could you get away with that. And then he said it again, only in the panhandle could you get away with that. Well, you all know where El Paso is, right? It's in the panhandle. Uh, this man needs to apologize to America. This is the man who, if he says thoughts and prayers, it would sound even more hollow than just the average person saying thoughts and prayers. So you, next time you think about saying thoughts and prayers, 
Well, maybe you shouldn't say thoughts and prayers. Maybe what you should say is something like, uh, what are we going to do about this? Or never again, okay? Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to get my... Uh, uh, I'm trying to get my Skype up. Anyway, so anyway, it's, it's all thoughts and prayers, and uh, I, my thoughts and prayers go out to the people. Gilroy, El Paso, and Dayton, and I may as well do a retroactive thoughts and prayers for whoever gets shot up this weekend. Okay? Terrible. Anyway, let me open up the lines here. We have a citizen panel we want to assemble. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I put in a, installed a new, uh, op, you know, upgraded the operating system, and all of a sudden my Skype doesn't look like it's supposed to look, but it does now. So here we go. Let me see here. Uh, let me uh, open that up. Somebody will call, I'm sure, any second now. And let me also um, do a few things here so I'm ready for the citizen panel. In case you don't know what a citizen panel is, that's when we have a whole bunch of people together at the same time. Like uh, Scott Boddicker, who's going to start us off here. Uh, let, me, let me put Scott up here on our uh, uh, panel here. Uh, there goes Scott. And let me see. That's an okay for Scott. Uh, and let me see here. Here comes Phil. Um, mm. uh, let me see here. Let me let me uh, talk to. Uh, let me see here. I gotta uh, put Phil in here. Da -da -da. Here comes Phil. Phil Meyer, a scuba diver. Okay. And here comes Dan. Okay, Dan. Okay. Um, uh, uh, let me see here. Where's where? Where? Wait a minute. Where, where? 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 All these people are coming at the same time. They're coming at me faster than I can. <laughs> than I can. Uh, uh, let me see here. Let me go to number three. Number three should be Dan. Oh no! It, no, it turns out to be Charlene. So we'll make number four Dan. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Number four. Uh, number four. Oh, yay! Yeah, yeah. You're 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 over modulating again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll just talk for a second, and uh, maybe yeah. it'll. Yeah, it, it tends to go down a little bit when you do that. Yeah. Okay. I can't do anything about. It. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. Let me see here. Uh, dee, 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 dee. There we go. There's our citizen panel so far. Uh, hello, Phil. Hey, oh, how oh, you doing? Oh wait a minute. Here comes Charles Wallace. <laughs> My work is never done during the first couple of minutes of this program. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see here. Five, four, five. Uh, there we go. Charlie Wall. Wait a minute. Char there we go. There's Charlie. Let me see here. There's Charles Wallace. I like the way you put it in there. It's Charles, which is kind of nice. Okay. There, there we go. Uh, hello to uh, Phil. Hello to Charlene. Hello to Charlie Wallace. Hello to Dan. Hello to uh, Scott Boddicker. Let me, let me, before we get going, let me say that I... Uh, I, I, what I, what I really want is a little more um, civilized discourse here. Uh, I, I wrote Phil today. I told Phil today that you know, hey, calm down a little bit, Phil. You know, um, uh, because it, it, you know, it gets to sometimes be a little bit of a problem. And Phil was nice enough to say anything for you, Alex. So thank you very much, Phil. I, I, I appreciate it. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, you know. Yeah, I don't want it to inhibit you, Phil. On the other hand. Take it back and watch. Uh, and the same with you, Dan. You get a little. Uh, I, I know. I'm yes. Yeah. I I I'm trying to be yeah. calm. Because what I really want to encourage here is a is a citizen panel that is robust, but at the same time everybody participates. You know, they don't just sit there saying, "Well, I can't get a word in H Y, so why should I?" You know. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, any any <laughs> thoughts, Phil? You might have a thought about what all that I just said. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know, uh, the there is so much divisiveness right now, and it's and to me, it's apparent that uh, the left has been trying to maximize their political position off of what's happened. The right is trying to, you know, not uh, uh, create any issues. 
So, uh, you know, what people need to do is they don't need to be told by somebody to come together. They should just come together because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, uh, but, but you, know, you get somebody like Mitch McConnell as an example. Who, 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 does, who was Moscow Mitch last week, this week he's murderous Mitch, because he doesn't want to do anything. You know, and I mean, he's, he's, in, charge, he's in charge of the majority in the Senate. Yeah, well, did Trump, and uh, did Trump, he, he did say that he, uh, he had a plan of, of, based on, uh, you know, the mental, uh, mental illness, uh, background checks, uh, much deeper background checks, and things like that. Yeah, but and he, he wanted something yeah. good to come from this yeah, well, terrible uh, well, disaster. The only good that I could see that would come from this disaster would be for him to resign. Okay, uh, because That's not gonna because happen. well, he's it's not going to happen, of course. Yes, uh, uh, Scott. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. Who, who was the president that when he got elected, but the, one of the first things he did was allow mentally ill people to buy guns? You know who that was? Right. Trump. It was, yeah, Obama it was era law, of, uh, gun law. Uh, yeah, it was part of uh, some social security thing, uh, right? No, it was, it, was, it was Trump. No, I understand it was Trump's administration, but the it was had to do with some Social Security thing. Let's remember uh, this. So it was just that's stuck a, on the Social Security. It was an Obama era law. That's, that's why. That's because that's because the Social Security people said if you're too mentally ill to handle your own cashing your check, you should you need. Uh, it was something that adjudicated Social Security cashing checks if you can't comprehend how to cash your own check but trump said that ah, you can still have a gun i don't think that's exactly the way it was written exactly what it is phil you can look it up that's fine you I'm don't have to, to look it up look, just look it up just look it up yeah well and and, and the other thing uh alex you had uh, you had about three things wrong in your thing uh, first off el paso was not in the panhandle it isn't in the panhandle i thought i thought it was no, the Panhandle is up north. That it, it's around, you know, how Oklahoma looks like a pan. Yeah. The Panhandle of Texas is up north. El oh. Paso's just extremely out west. Okay. Well. And, and 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 the shooter, the shooter was not from McAllen, Texas. He was from Allen, Texas. Allen. Well, I, I I wasn't wrong because I did say originally Allen, but then I it seemed to always remember there is a McAllen, Texas, isn't there? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, it yeah. is Allen, and it's 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 the next suburb up from me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't know how much uh, you know the the political bent of the shooters uh, are, and uh, it may not be true. You know, they're still investigating it. But um, okay, so this guy uh, was a sick mental patient down in, uh, or should have been a mental patient uh, down in Texas. The guy from uh, Ohio. I understand was a uh, uh, from his tweets. Uh, he was a uh, Bernie supporter. A uh, uh, so what does what's, that matter? What does well, that matter? It's the it's what because you're tagging. You're no, tagging no, 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 Phil, Phil, wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second. Did, let, let me let me just did, enter did in he here. Have a let me let, yeah. let me enter in here for a second, okay? Uh, by saying that. Um, uh, uh, first of all, we're complaining about Trump's behavior vis-a-vis -vis the El Paso situation because the, the, the screeds and the manifestos of this guy literally uh, 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 copied Trump, Trump. Trump's, uh, Trump's screeds yeah. as well. Yeah, this term exactly. screed has become a whole new word to you, so... We'll use the word screed uh, here, but I thought there was two yeah. shootings. This uh, well, no, no. What I said, no. What I'm saying is the one in El Paso was a racially motivated yes. action yes. based okay. upon hey, the Brian. words, based upon the words of Donald Trump. Okay, and his and, tweet. So let me finish. Mm -hmm. The the one in in Dayton, Ohio, hey. was not racial in nature and was not due to. Uh, 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 anything that Donald oh. Trump has oh. done except that maybe he hasn't created gun laws in this country because of his inherent love and, and, and relationship with the NRA. 
But the, the, I, I, we did not say that. The, 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 I, I don't care if this guy was a Bernie supporter or not. I mean, Bernie supporters and, can be crazy. And Antifa. Hmm? And uh, he supported Antifa. And, you know, uh, I don't, when you mother. when you talk no, about no, Antifa, with the, we're not talking about that. When you talk about so Antifa, God. when you talk about Antifa, I don't even know what Antifa is. I thought it was a an island somewhere. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I uh, Antifa, yeah. Antifa is a right wing made up thing for uh, yes. left wing protesters who get a little bit too uppity. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Uh, 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 Antifa is, I don't think it's even a centralized organization. No, the yeah. right seems to think it's like the next MS-13, yeah. but it's just like. peep, whatever. Yeah. They all dress alike. Well, it's all made up is what he's trying to say. Uh, I, I, I'll, yes, tell that to the guy that replaces the glass in his windows. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Charlie. Uh, apparently there was another shooting in a Walmart in Baton Rouge, Louisiana tonight. That's yeah, four just... shootings in four days. Okay. Um, let me see here. Let me, first of all, let me Did get that back. get your attention, Walmart okay. shoppers? Walmart. Yeah, well, well I, 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 you know, <laughs> me and my little sick way of, of thinking things, I, I wondered if uh, 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 when the guy came in with the guns and everything, did the guy say, welcome to Walmart? You know, because they, <laughs> they have to do that. Uh, it, it's just, you know, I mean, it, 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 I there are so many it. places to f put blame, okay? Uh, and I, I don't want to necessarily okay. put that blame. I would not like to have to put it at the president's doorstep, but, I mean, come on. You know, when you have a guy who's literally writing before he goes in and shoots this place up, and, and quoting Donald Trump, you have to say, are we right. giving a sense of permission or aren't we giving a aren't sense of permission? Aren't there flags that this kid had in high school? He was 24. I No, the one in Ohio was 24. You're talking about the Dayton shooter, Phil. No, at, at the, there were yeah. red flags for him in high school. Absolutely. Yeah. What about the, the guy in Texas? What about uh, the guy whether, in Texas? Whether, you know, didn't he have writings? He was on this yes, uh, yes. cloud nine. Or yes, he, he, had, he had, had writings, and, and he was literally quoting Donald Trump in those writings. He retweets, this, he, what, you know, he retweets a tweet that has um, a picture of guns that spell out Trump's right. name. Did you see I that one? That. You know, sure, a lot of people retweet. So he, whatever. If, what we're saying, Phil, is that the 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 link between Trump encouraging this nutcase. You see, when you're a president, and when or when you're a broadcaster, you have to assume there are nutcases out there, and so you have to be very careful about whether you incite people to do anything. And Trump has had no conscience where this is concerned. He's had no uh, no uh, uh, decency where this is concerned. Yeah. Right. Yes, uh, uh, Tony, did I see that? I'm not excited to, to do anything. Tony, did sure. I see you with your hand up? Yeah, that was an interesting point of view. I like that, what you just said. So, what? like, when you said you were on air, you'd have to re What? See, this is what if you're talking to somebody, if you're doing radio or something. See, this is my question to Phil, and that's a good point, Alex, because he never, like, after all this has happened, Phil, right, he never gets on the platform and say to himself, like, in his little group and say, maybe I have to have, listen, get my speechwriters together. I don't want to contact these people. Maybe I have to take a stand now and really totally See, pull what, this what, country what together. Is, he doesn't what, hug anybody. What it is, Tony, is it's beyond him. It's beyond him. It's beyond him to say what I said earlier that he should have said was, and I have to go back and look at my own behavior in this matter because I do do a lot of tweets and am I doing some of these things myself? You know, if he had said That's that, I would have went, maybe this guy isn't as bad as he thought he was. No, you wouldn't have. No, I would have. I would have lauded him for that. But he's he, incapable he, of it, Phil. He's he incapable immediately, of it. He doesn't take responsibility for his actions. He immediately like, came out and right. condemned uh, the uh, white uh, racism and the... Uh, oh, yeah, but he and, had to. It was like he but had he to. did. He, had he didn't have to. And he read... Okay. Can I say something? Yeah, and then uh, Charlene. After Sandy Hook, 
Did you remember right after Sandy Hook? Do you remember when President Obama went up and talked about that? What did he do? Who can tell nothing. me what he did? He cried at that. He did he nothing. Cried. He did cry. And Donald Trump, when he was giving his speech, he's like, they, 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 I don't want to He didn't mean a word of it. He no, didn't he mean did. a word he of didn't it. didn't sound sincere at all. Right, no. not a Nothing word. Nothing sounds sincere to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't sound... Uh, it did it's to me. He's, being like, he's controlled. He's a victim of, of, us, uh, of us mean, angry liberals. Yeah. Poor Bill's a victim. But I, I, it's amazing to me... And, I'm and, never a victim. Uh, uh, no, I mean, I, it's amazing to me that he is capable of being so insincere and not actually having written the words, okay? And he still manages to be insincere. So, you know. Uh, like, here's a good example, Alex. Mm -hmm. Like, say, let's see the... You're breaking up, Tony. I'm glad it's him and not my reception. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was my phone. Can you hear me now? Y yeah, yeah. Are you okay. the Verizon guy? I'm on fire. But, but here's a question, though. Boy, you're breaking up like crazy, Tony. Yeah. Tony, why don't you hang up and just call I'll us right back. Call, back in here. call okay. right back, okay? Alex. Yes, Charlene. I wanted to say... You know, not only is he um, not writing his own words, he's insincere. He blames video games for the whole thing. So do I. I know. Oh. I thought of you, Phil. I thought of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hey. play. I play video games, Phil. I play right. war games, and I don't kill people. That's because you don't. You're too cheap to buy a gun. They got video games in Canada. They got video games in England. They got video games in Japan. Japan's ahead of video games. Where's the murders there? Uh, they don't have democratic liberals like they, they don't do in have this country. guns. They uh, don't that's have not guns. true. Canada has plenty of guns. Well, they, they're not shooting anybody. Then they, it's not the guns. It's the, maybe, maybe it's the American people. Uh, you know, the angry people that uh, you know just uh, think about nothing mm -hmm. else but their hate. For Donald Trump. The, mm -hmm. the people stoked by Donald Stop Trump? Around, the people please. goaded by Donald Trump? Are you a victim? Are you not capable of making your own decisions and, and deciding what you want to do? Are you so affected by what somebody else says that you right. have this kind of hate? Uh, well, Alex, wait, wait, wait a minute. He also blamed the news media. He also blamed the news media. Yeah, well, so, you, you know, in that blame, he should that. have he should have been capable of blaming himself as well, you he know, but but he, but he, but he was, he's incapable of that by saying maybe I should uh, also while I'm asking you to inspect what you're doing, I should uh, do the same with myself. And he didn't, you know, he just oh it's video game problems. It's kind of like uh, the kid comes home, goes to class in the morning. They go, where's your homework? Oh, the dog ate it. You know, well, I mean, this is the equivalent of the dog ate my homework. Oh, it's video games. It's this. It's that. It's not well, you, too. You know, he's talking about the Internet and how it, there are a lot of diatribes on the Internet. Well, hey, how about you? Yeah, how about you? Yeah, Tell, uh, uh, Patrick, how do you feel about all of this? Uh, you've got to have some, uh, either that or you're numb to it. I, I am only here, actually, mm -hmm. if had popcorn, I'd just be sitting here eating popcorn. <laughs> I'm basically on Phil's side. So now you well, know my... Phil, Phil's what side I mean. in what respect? Guns. But we really haven't gotten into the gun question yet. You know, we really no, haven't I gotten... Yeah. I don't blame the president either. I mean, these fucking people—they gotta take responsibility for themselves. No, so, but, I, Phil, it, but look. Uh, uh, well, let me say this. Let me say this, uh, um, Patrick. Patrick, <laughs> uh, I'm. What I'm saying here is, is that we all have to take responsibility for our part in the matter. You and I have no part in the matter, but the president does. And the president, as the leader of the country, no, yes, he does, Patrick. Yes, he what does. do you mean, no? My opinion is no. My opinion is no. 
I don't feel he has had any responsibility in any of this. I mean, to me, that's a cop-out by giving a way out for the people that commit these atrocities, these acts of terrorism, whatever you want to call it, by blaming it on the president or blaming it on a book or, Phil, blaming it on a video game. None of that. It's what their own fucking... Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden, he was the head of the... El whatever. Yeah, I guess he, stuff. you can't blame him he, for anything either then, the, right? The most attack on the on the 9-11 stuff? Was he the yeah. blamer? Is this a whataboutism? He, I don't, he, was he the blamer? Was, so why'd we kill him? Why'd we kill him if he wasn't Obama the blame? killed him. The blame. He orchestrated the whole thing. Oh, he orchestrated it. Oh, I see. How'd he do that? By talking to people, right? He talked well, to them he and trained. he trained them. Believe what he said about America being bad. Is that correct, Scott? Yes I know no? you're. I know you're on a ramp, so I'm not going to say anything. Was 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 he talking to these people? Answer to this question, Patrick. Don't treat him like a mental patient. So, so Trump is <laughs> you want some popcorn? People and they're starting to believe this stuff that immigrants are bad. That's the same thing. Yes or no? No, it's not because he's a white guy. And Osama was a Muslim. Do, do you want me to answer or no? Yeah, 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 please, I please. Shit thing okay, anyway. okay, Scott, well, let, 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 let Patrick let answer, answer here. I don't want to hear what he says. <laughs> well, Patrick. <laughs> I, think, I, think Alex, 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 I think it's time for me to go, don't you? No, 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 no stay there. No, calm down, calm down. Just calm down. This. Calm down. I just want to hear what Patrick has to say because, you know, you asked him a question. Patrick. I, well, no, I'm going to respond to Dan now. Dan? I already knew what it was going to be. That's why I would answer in the way I did. Hmm. So I wasn't treating him like a mental patient. I already knew that he didn't want to hear what I had to say. So I'm not going to waste my time. That's because you've got nothing to say about it. That's right. Because it is the same thing. Leaders lead and their words have actions. Yeah, that's exactly well, true. You have to be, all I'm saying is, you have to be responsible for the words that you say, more responsible when you're president. Then, you know, Absolutely. all of us here could say anything we wanted, and, and who are we going to influence? Very few people. But the president of the United States says something, and people pay attention to it. And so, therefore, you have a responsibility to. Part of being presidential is the welfare of the country and to not incite situations which might endanger the public as a whole. And so that's why you don't, uh, you know, uh, go out and start, you know, it's ranting like and raving. It's like fire in a crowded movie theater. Yeah. I mean, that's a simplified version of it. Something like, yeah, it's along those lines. But how long, you know, uh, oh, let me, okay, let's, let's ask this. Okay, because this will make it a, a, a good civil question to ask. And I would ask Scott, first of all, since he's at the top of the, of the picture there. Um, he's up there, up there. Uh, 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 Scott, what do, we, what do we do about guns? What do we do about the gun question here? People can have shotguns. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with shotguns. Why they don't need assault rifles. They don't need assault rifles. Pistols are, I don't like. I mean, guns Guns are good. Guns are good. But the, the guy in Dayton, I believe, Dayton, yeah. he had a gun. He had a gun with a 100-round clip in it. I've never even heard of a 100-round clip. Drum it magazine is what it's called. Magazine. It was amazing. Yep. He shot <laughs> 41 times in 30 seconds. Yeah, you don't need it's no weapon of war is what it is. Gun Phil, does he need it? They they stopped him. Wait a minute, what, what, against what, the what, people what? that want to take your rights away. You know, yeah. in Hong Kong right now, you know there might be uh, hundreds Phil, of thousands of people slaughtered. I call slaughtered. Bull, I call bullshit on that. I call, call, I call bullshit, bullshit big time on that. Loose. Let me explain why I call bullshit on it. If if the public is armed, that doesn't mean they can't they can't protect themselves against they can protect themselves against uh, someone who would wish to overthrow them or whatever. A country that doesn't want to be overthrown is impossible to overthrow. 
I don't care if you have guns or you don't have guns. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Okay. You know, so, I mean, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't buy that as an argument, Phil. I just don't buy that as an argument because, because guns are not going to stop them, but people resisting are going to stop them. And you resist with your gun? No, you don't resist the- with a gun, <laughs> Phil. Look, Gandhi made a whole country out of not using weapons. Can I yeah. say something? Yeah, yeah. What do you want to say? You know what? You know what it is? I, I mean, uh, I, there's no reason why that guy should have an assault rifle with, what is it, like you can shoot 80 rounds in a second? I guarantee you, if he had a regular 38 and he was in the street, he never would have went out and did that, Phil, because he couldn't just spray it out like it was a Doom video game. If he didn't have that automatic type weapon that could just spray everybody, Wasn't his automatic. ass would be home in his kitchen eating yogurt. Well, the guy in Dayton, the guy in Dayton, as an example, uh, was stopped after 30 seconds, but he had already spent something like 41 rounds or something yeah. in that you 30 that, seconds. Uh, uh, that uh, clip yeah. that I sent you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You sent me I, a clip of the noise. I, I decided not to run it because but, it is just the audio. But, but mm-hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, it's just the audio, but you can, you know, you can hear it. And, you know, I, living around here, Mm-hmm. And we'll get something else that happened from around here. My representative who represents me is a total bitch. But uh, anyway, um, he ha- these weapons are, I know plenty of uh, people, like a woman once would like to have a gun in her purse. I don't, I don't agree with that necessarily, but... You know, I'm not going to go after somebody who just for personal protection wants to have like a handgun mm-hmm. in their for, for protection. Mm-hmm. Or my dad, I knew a lot of hunters. Hunting, I don't care about that. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm not going to stop anybody from hunting. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to use an, automa- uh, an automatic or semi-automatic weapon in any situation ever. And that's okay. Not okay, but let me let me get back. To, let me get there back. Is, I don't the care bad what you say about one. having your rights well, me, 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 up, Phil, but these yeah. weapons are not but for. Let me get back to you know, what are Dan, you possibly Dan, to do with Dan, 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 calm down, Dan, calm down. Okay, okay. sorry. Okay, <laughs> because that's not the question at hand. The question is at hand is how are you, we going to solve this problem of of guns in this country? And and so Phil would be the next one that I would ask, and he's the next one in line. Yes, Phil. I don't think that there's a problem with guns in this country. I think there's a problem right. with drugs. I think there's a problem with video games. I think there's a mental illness problem in this country. You know, taking away guns from law-abiding citizens is not the way you solve a problem. Taking guns away from criminals and from uh, people that are uh, have mental problems is how you solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, naive Alex? is best, Phil. Uh, let's go to Charlene. No, I, uh, I was watching like Face the Nation and stuff over the weekend, mm-hmm. and I think they're calling that red laws or something, right? Like when you uh, take the guns away from the people that are, and that what that means is that if you're like a neighbor or a family member, you're supposed to realize that somebody might be uh, like bipolar or something like that. Okay, but let me ask and, you this question, and and slippery slope, and, and, and Phil Phil could join in on the answer to this. If you say that you were not going to allow a crazy person to have a gun. If you believe explicitly in the Second Amendment, isn't that a violation of his Second Amendment rights, even though he's crazy? Right. No. That's what I was thinking. Right. You know, if what do you mean? What is, do you mean? No, Phil. I mean, uh, are well, you are you saying? Wait a minute. Are you saying that there are exceptions to the Second Amendment? Now, what, I'm asking. I citizens. asked you a direct question, Phil. Because well, you're for no, the Second Amendment. Question. No, it's uh, not a loaded question. You're saying because, you're saying you 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 want to take away guns from people who have mental problems. And my question to you is, does that not violate their Second Amendment right? Probably, but you know, I uh, you oh, can, well, you now. have to you have uh, to but, you have to be able. You can't. It's mm-hmm. not a. It's, it's not okay. A, okay. A let me go. Let me go. Let me go back let me to finish. one. Let me, 
Wait a minute. It's, it's not a cut and dry thing. If you have somebody that is dangerous, you don't put a gun in their okay. hands. But they let lost me... their Second Amendment uh, rights uh, the... when when they're uh, when they okay. are in a situation where they can't own and okay. you, and and have a gun. Okay. Uh, so you want guns to protect yourself from a from a government that might want to do ill and take over, right? That's part of right, it. Right. Right. What's to say that government doesn't say to people who have guns, you're crazy, we're taking the guns away from you? Well, that's, that's an interesting thing, because usually most totalitarian governments that want to take your rights away, the first thing they do take is the guns. No, it's not. Uh, or the books. No, it's not. They it's, burn it, the it, books, no, it, they take it, the guns. It, it's your rights they take first. Well, okay. that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Dan, your solution to the gun problem. Well, I kind of brought it up before. It's, it's, I mean, I'm not going to... I mean, I'm against guns pretty much in most situations, but like most people around here, a lot of people will want to have a gun for protection. Mm -hmm. uh, hunting is okay, but there is no reason to have these assault rifles. Any, there is no circumstance in which that does anybody any good except they can say, well, it's my right to have it, so I'm going to have it because it's my right to have it. Well, you know, then your right, uh, your apparent, your perceived right supersedes other people's lives, which, you know, yeah. what you, it's like a way you weigh on a scale, you know, which means more to you. Yeah. That's the kind of thing. Okay, Charlie. It's your turn. Well, I actually agree with Phil on that about how you don't give guns. It's fine to take away guns from crazy people and from criminals. But how do you know that they're crazy and criminals if you don't do a background check? So my solution is the universal background check. Everybody to buy a gun has to go through a background check. Can I say that I think the problem, my, it's a slippery slope because you got these HIPAA laws that uh, – People can't say anything. I mean, even if you go to, to get employment and you call the person's uh, last employer, they don't want to say anything because they don't want to get sued. You know, it, it's it's a it's a atmosphere of of being afraid to be sued, uh, and you're afraid to say anything that might come back. Uh, to bite you because if you say, "Hey, look, this guy, I'm a little worried about him. I think he's crazy," and 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 you turn him in, uh, then all of a sudden you're the bad well, guy. Well, wait a minute. Let me. Th people let me, don't want to get involved. Let me throw this out there. The, the um, I saw the interviewed uh, an ex-girlfriend of the guy who shot up the bar in uh, in uh, Dayton, uh, or as the president the, as the president referred to it, Toledo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Did Biden make the same mistake also? Yeah, Biden made a similar mistake. He said mistake. Wisconsin. Well, so the, the, yeah. then there's Michigan, only one more Wisconsin, reason for me Michigan. to not like Biden. Okay. Michigan. But anyway, Michigan. the point I'm making is is that um, uh, they interviewed the girlfriend, uh, ex-girlfriend, and she said they were both attracted to each other because they were both kind of crazy and they were both, I think, seeking medical help. Uh, but she said, this is a guy who throw, fell through the cracks. She said, I stopped seeing him, but he fell through the cracks. But, you know, from the first time we met, he, he showed me a video of a mass shooting, you know. And he, oh. he, she said, I knew he was kind of crazy. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, you're the very person. That, but if she'd gone to somebody and said, this guy's crazy, and I think he's capable of this sort of thing, do you think that she, anybody would have paid attention to her? Is the question. What about the schools? Well, no, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Dan's got his hand up. Yes, Dan. Oh, well, yeah. There, I mean, there's a lot to it. There's obviously more to blame than guns. But, and, um, you know, this guy was in high school. He was making lists of people he wanted to kill. But the thing right. is, none of it ever, I think, made a paper trail. So oh. he obtained his weapons legally. Yeah, that's the problem with let, HIPAA, let me, and that's let, the problem with uh, the schools. Let me, not, wait a minute. Uh, hold, hold on, hold, well, yeah, hold on okay, a second, everybody. Hold on a second. Hold right. on a second. I got my pen here. This guy shouldn't have let's had a see, gun. Let's see here. Phil, and, uh, and let's see here. Uh, uh, Dan. Uh, and, oh, I'm just making my list of the people I want to kill. Okay, so uh, we're... <laughs> we're, 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 we're you you want to you wanna buy a gun? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he have oh, but you can't in New York. 
you can't even own a gun in New York City. Alex, didn't he have a list my of people friend he went to, to rape too? My my friend went to jail. Just got out for three years in New York because he, there was a home invasion robbery at his house in Midtown, and uh, he had a bodyguard, but the bodyguard wasn't there, and uh, the the bodyguard's gun was there, and he thwarted the thing with uh, the bodyguard's gun. He thwarted the the deal. Yeah. What ended up happening was the police came, he showed them what happened on the surveillance system, and he got arrested and spent three years in jail uh, because he, the, the, the Sullivan, gun that it's he called, used it's called, wasn't his. It's called the Sullivan Law, and, and we have it here in New York City. The Sullivan Law makes it illegal, actually, to uh, own a firearm in the city of Manhattan without special permits, which right. you're not in easily given out. In his own house. Out. Yeah, and oh. he and he was being you know uh, a very wealthy guy, mm -hmm. uh, guy I've known since I'm a kid, yeah. and uh, the um, the deal is you know he was this is the second home invasion that happened. It was and they they mm -hmm. they found the guys, they arrested the guys that did it because of the surveillance okay. tapes. Okay. but they also arrested my friend. Okay, let me go uh, to uh, uh, let me go to uh, uh, Tony. Tony, how how would you solve this problem of guns? Well. You know what? Uh, I would do like Charlie said. You have to have a, a thorough background check. I think they need training for. I think you have to. I would go to training for like a year before you can actually see the gun. So you can be safe. So well, you, you have to, you know, you have to pass a whole bar of things. I don't think there's any reason why we should have those automatic eighty whatever the hell that shoots a hundred like it's a video. T Tony, a yeah, Tony, 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 it, Tony. But if you, you want, you're, he, you're still breaking up on us. Yes. Uh, uh, Breaking up is hard to do. Service provider. My, no, my question is, uh, what are you? How are you hooked up to the internet? Are, are, are you using the Wi-Fi? Uh, wire. Wire. Yeah. Yeah. Wi-Fi. I think there's uh, a uh, hamster on a wheel can, back. Can you hear me now? Where, 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 where's your Wi-Fi? Where are these calls from? But no, but where's the Wi-Fi? Sometimes the Wi-Fi can be in another room. Let me move my computer to the other. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. That's probably. Then we're gonna miss that wallpaper. Yeah, we're gonna miss the wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, that's horrible. Who wants to miss that wallpaper? Hey, when you guys are done with this one, uh, I've got a uh, special announcement. You have a special announcement? Yeah. Really? I'm down five and a half pounds in a day and a half. Very good, very good. But oh. and how do you look? How do you look thin, fat? Anyway, well, uh, because pounds. of the movie I watched yeah, called healthy, Fat, Sick, and uh, and Nearly Dead. Uh, so I've been juicing. You've been juicing. Anyway, I'm going to juice. Uh, 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 let me. Uh, let me. Uh, we uh, we haven't gotten to. Uh, oh, now now are you okay there? Um, um, yeah, I'm in front of the computer. Uh, uh, like yeah, oh, oh yeah, now you're right. fine. Yeah, uh, let's see your face a little more, though. Move your camera in a way that you can see your and face. And turn the light on. Can you see me? No. Oh, hold on, I'm in the big room. Hold on. You can see those. Now you're gonna see paneling. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Paneling. Paneling. Maybe. It's 1968 again. Yeah, when I yeah when I look at the. Uh... Okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Anyway, Tony. When I when I look at your video, it's always like I'm looking back on a TV show from the 50s. Well, that's the big thing. I got my movies all over the floor. Yeah. Anyway, so what did you say about guns now? Go ahead. Okay, this is what I say. I don't mind somebody owning a gun, but I don't like those things that shoot like 90 rounds. I don't think there's any use for that in society. And I think they need thorough training and a background check, like Charlie said. But I also would go a step further. I would want training for like a year. And here's another thing, Phil, I would add. Every two or three years, they should recheck these people mentally because you never know when they're going to go off the fucking deep end and go crazy. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, two weeks ago Sunday, uh, I was part of a group that was training three rabbis to be able to uh, protect their synagogues. And... Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, teaching them how to shoot in different scenarios. And uh, we set up a mock synagogue and had a mock uh, uh, shooters that uh, we had to address. And, uh, you know, uh, it's that's the kind of stuff that people need. They need to be made aware of the threat that's out there. And they have to be trained how to do it because you got these fight or flight uh, uh, things that go on in your in your mind. And if you're if you're going to run away, you're going to get shot. 
Mm-hmm. If, if you're going to hide, you're going to get shot. And if you fight, you got a chance. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's what they have to learn to do. And it's not something you do. So are, the, oh, are oh, these oh. rabbis carrying eight, 8K-47s? Uh, well, they're carrying uh, uh, concealed pistols, but they might be up against an AK-47. In which it case, is that pistol going to be any good for them? Yeah. Uh, well, the shot day. placement, the shot placement is more important. But than you're how expecting many a bunch of rabbis. You're teaching on a Saturday to be good enough at uh, shot yeah, placement. Exactly. We taught them on a huh? Sunday. Oh, yeah. okay. Sunday. Oh, excuse me. You couldn't do it on a Saturday. They're not allowed to hold anything mechanical. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, Patrick. Uh, this question to you. What, 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 do you, what do you think? How do we solve this problem? Obviously, we have an epidemic in this country of people using guns to bad purposes. Okay? Well, we've, we've already got background checks. Mm-hmm. Um, we've already, uh, at, least Not in, everywhere. at least in the state of Wisconsin, uh, you cannot purchase a weapon at a gun show without a background check. You have to fill out paperwork and you do not receive that weapon the same day that you purchase it. Um, as far as magazines, um, I, it doesn't bother me because you can't buy an automatic weapon unless you have a special permit. So you could have a 90 round or 100 round magazine which I've seen, they're typically two uh, round cylinders that fit in like a regular magazine. Um, and it, they're, they're only going to a trigger. It's no different than a, than a regular hunting rifle. Um, as far as mental health, that I agree with Phil that it's it's a scary area because of the HIPAA laws. Um, you know, unless you catch somebody, like you said, that girlfriend or ex-girlfriend said that, you know, he was showing her, unless you can show somebody that they're in the process of doing something a little bit odd. Um, if you have a criminal background of felonies, uh, for example, you, you should not be able to own a, a gun, no matter what the felony was. I mean, you know, you, that you get that right. Uh, so, mm-hmm. but as far as banning any types of guns, the types of guns are already banned that, that are the problem, which are fully automatic. Mm-hmm. Semi auto, like yeah. I said, is no different than a hunting rifle. It just It's more menacing because of the cosmetics that are on it. Semi automatic. You don't have to cock it before every shot. Trump already banned banned bump stocks. And uh, I used one uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's just like an automatic. Well, I I thought they were were banned, Phil. How did you get your hands on one? They're banned to buy. This guy already had one. Uh, Already had one. Yes, Scott. Uh, How many people are out out there are duck hunters? Anybody hunt duck? <laughs> Only during duck My season. Used to hunt what? Duck. I mean, he was alive. There's a there's a rule in duck hunting. You got a shotgun because you need a shotgun because it's hard to hit a duck out of the air. Mm-hmm. But you can only put three shells in a six shot shotgun. You have to have a plug in there so you can only put three shells in it to protect the ducks from being <laughs> overkill. Yeah, but I... that's, that's okay with ducks. But don't worry about the fucking people. It's just a gun. Uh, Scott, right. my shotgun Stupid holds fuckers. eight rounds because I got it when I was in the police department. He's but talking you, about high capacity magazines. I, he said shotgun. Okay, but, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute well, hold on a second. Well, let me. Let me six, six, wait a minute. Six, eight, eight, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. It's been a long no, time no. Uh, but funny. but you can only have uh, I think it's five rounds uh, in California in a in a shotgun. They put a plug in it. So you can't okay. have as many. Okay. Mine has uh, to have we, we have Kevin who has joined the panel. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Good evening. Yes. Uh, how, how do you... Well, you live now... You live near Gilroy, actually. Yep. How, uh, how would you solve this problem? The guns? It's a hard question. Uh, yep. <laughs> it's really hard. 
I'd like to see assault weapons go away, but that's going to be a hard one. Yeah. Uh, well, nobody... because, because of what Scott's saying, you know, what use are they? They, they, they maim, you know, I was, I was listening to the, uh, the triage, the, the triage doctors talking about the, uh, the damage that they cause, you know, soft tissues, um, and because of the, they're when they're used in, in situations like this, that they're they're so close to you know people. Obviously, you know in combat, that's what they use them for. But when they're you know in a in a store situation or something like that, and they're and what they do to people, it, it, it rips the hell out of the insides of people. It tears the hell out of bones. You know, at least give them a running chance and, and use a rifle. You know, uh, for Christ's sakes, uh, yeah. why use an AR-15 or AK-47? There, you know, the the idea is to, to do the most damage possible. Yeah, it's it just you know, what are you going to do? I, I guess you start with universal background checks and mental health and multi-automatic, you know, magazines. Well, it's okay. it's hard because. I'm not anti anti gun, but it's it's hard to figure out where you start. Where but draw I think the line. assault weapons yeah. is the first one because there's no there's no place for them in society. They're they're for the war and that's it. Well, let me say yeah. that I uh, you know let me give you my opinion here. Uh, I uh, you know I'm very much against guns. Period. But that that's my own personal aesthetic feeling about them. Okay, but uh, my point is. Why don't we do something where, for instance, let's say you're a hunter, all right, and you like to go hunting. Well, I understand that. That's a, a great American sport, killing little an helpless, defenseless animals. That's, uh, that's uh, in the great American tradition. And, and, a lot, and a lot of fathers, and I'm sure uh, Scott, who lives in Texas, can attest to this, a lot of fathers have bond with their sons when they're younger by taking them out hunting. So uh, hunting means a lot to these people believe it or not, yeah. as a ritual. Uh, but there's no reason why you can't say, hey, you want to have a, a, a gun? You have to keep it at a gun club. And, the, you know, and then you go out on the property of the gun club and go shooting. And if you want to move it to another gun club, then you move it. To, but it has to be kept at a, at a gun club if you're a hunter. Okay. So far as personal weapons, like a gun, uh, a, 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 what do you call it, a revolver or whatever, uh, a Glock, like, is that a Glock you have, Phil? I, I can't. Uh, it's a Colt. A Colt, okay. Uh, government 1911. Uh, you want to protect yourself at home, right? At home and, and, and out. Oh, wait, a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what, most people will tell you they want to protect their home. I want to protect uh, myself well, that, and others. Well, that's because you're you know? very paranoid, and that's why I don't want to see you having a gun. <laughs> no, but, I'm not paranoid. You know, uh, the, but the thing well, is, what I'm, I'm saying is, I, if people want to have, am, if, if am, people want to have, have a pistol, years of training, actually it, it, thirty. Okay, years okay, of okay. we don't. Want, we know all that. If if if, 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 if people want a pistol, uh, I think they should be required to keep it in the house, not not. Uh, Take it around. I'll tell you, they had a very stupid law in Texas, and I think uh, Scott will probably bear this up uh, for me. What are, you, what are you doing with your... <laughs> with I'm your trying thing? to show you my safe, but I can't well, figure out the angle. Of the safe. Don't, don't worry. We don't need to see your condom. Um, <laughs> uh, there, there it is. Uh, okay, there's your safe. Okay. Yeah. And what That's is what? And mind. what is the combination, Phil? Anyway, <laughs> uh, no, let me... Um, Stand it. One, two, three, four. Yeah, Scott will probably attest to this. When I lived in Texas, they had a really silly law. And the law was that you could not carry a gun in your car at any time unless you were moving it from one place to another. Do you remember that law, Scott? I never had a gun in Texas, so yeah. I don't... Uh, I, I often... I said, attention to it. So what happens? You get stopped. Cop finds you with a gun. Oh, I'm taking this home. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, stops you with a gun. I'm taking this to work. Yeah. You know. You're in other words, it was they they made a law. They made a law because they felt they had to make a law, but the law didn't do shit. 
exactly. You know, you know, maybe they didn't want people to leave them in the car unattended because it was easy to steal or break Phil, in. This is Texas. Don't put any well, logical. Just think about it. If you have to, they take their guns carry. to the airport and get them confiscated at the TSA. They're so stupid. <laughs> Right. If you have to take it from one place to the other, that means you cannot leave it in there. Makes yeah. sense to me. Hmm? Well, uh, the point is, and, and I guess uh, what, what I'm asking here is, they've got to be, you know, there's got to be a way we can slow down the progress. I, like, for instance, I agree. AK-47s, I see no reason why anybody should even be allowed to own one. Okay. That's because they're Russian. I mean, are you going to go? Are you going to go shooting ducks with a, with with an AK forty seven? Well, I mean, I mean, you'll shoot a lot of ducks and fast. You better be ready for your dog to of, catch you'll them. You'll get a lot of hamburger really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a lot of hamburger really quick. <laughs> you know, but I mean, uh, uh, the question is, what do we, how, what you know? What do we do? We look. Obviously, there is an epidemic in America. We are seeing these on such... Do you know that since the first of the year, there have been 150 mass shootings? 200. Oh, was it yeah, 250? Something, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 250. They, they had a sale. Well, I mean, it, that day. should say to you... That More they, than days, yeah. It, that should say to you that there's an epidemic going on here, that we actually have some kind of a mass epidemic uh, it, in the use of these guns, ah, uh, 250 since the first of the year. We haven't had 250 days yet. There's a special at Walmart Great on shootings. Great Britain's gone nine years without one. What? What country's gone without one? Great Britain. Great Britain. Yeah. It's gone nine years without a single yeah. man. But they got cars that run down the bridge and kill uh, 120 uh, people. Uh, They've uh, got uh, Phil, bombs Phil, that they Phil. put. They don't kill 120 people. Just How many people up. did they kill at the uh, on the London it was the London Bridge or right in front like of Parliament? Yeah. Well, how many people the, got hit? 20, 120. Twenty rate is a good killing in America. Yeah. No. I, 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 what, what a piker. Nine. That's, huh? That's why. That's why the British w lost. We're the war st we're stars. starting to pray for nine now, Phil. Yeah. Well, that's why the British you know, lost the war. It, 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 it's interesting. It's interesting that Dayton, Dayton amounted to a good day. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah. What does that say about Gilroy? Well, Gil how many? How many Gil there were four, four, four in Gilroy, four. right? Am mm -hmm. I right, Kevin? Three, 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 three in well, Gilroy. Three died in Gilroy, and, and the one thing that the, uh, how many the died police Rouge? chief said today Apparently during a press nobody. conference. Wait, wait, wait. Well, yeah, what were you going to say, Kevin? The one thing the police chief said today during the press conference is that this guy had uh, a long-range rifle or gun, whatever he had, the, the SK, mm -hmm. that he was going up against the three cops that went after him had pistols. Mm -hmm. And they, were, they could not get close enough in pistol range because he had a, a gun that was long-range. So they were lucky to get shots at this guy. He killed himself, but they had to they still had to shoot him to, you know, fully disengage him. And they were lucky to get close enough to get shots at him and make sure that they didn't hit anybody else. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 the you know, that's the difference between uh, a pistol and a long, you know, uh, an assault rifle. They, he could, he could have shot them all three of those cops, if he didn't shoot himself. The, and he could have uh, shot everybody else yeah. behind him. You have to, as a cop, you has, have to, uh, you have to be felt? responsible for every round you put down range. So uh, now, as a mass shooter, it doesn't matter where you put your rounds. Exactly. But cops need to. Trained to the level that they are responsible for every round that they put down. But yeah, you know what we're doing? They were doing, damn good at what they did. What we're doing? It's lucky yes. that he put yeah. one inside himself before he, before they, you know, mm. before he ended up they, putting some more down that way. Right before he got into the bar, and if he would have made it into that bar, it would have been catastrophic. They said. Which guy is that? The, uh, the Gil Gilroy? No, the Dayton. No, the Dayton guy didn't even get into the bar. I know he didn't get into the bar, but if he would have gotten into the bar, oh, you're talking about Gilroy. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're talking Did about. Did you Gilroy. see the pictures in Dayton of the cops going towards the shooter? Yes. All right, 
and uh, you still hate cops? No, we we, we hear the cops I, there did an excellent job. I hated job. cops. Yeah, uh, I, I got I, April twelfth, nineteen seventy nine. Uh, well, I have it I'm on nine Facebook. years old then. Those cops did a great job. They were there in thirty seconds, got it done. You know, you got a good hit. You know, the guy they were shooting was armed, so I support that cop shooting. <laughs> yeah. Um, what if he was black? Why are we even bringing that up? Yeah. Well, he, the, you know, that's the, that's the deal, you know, that no, cops we're, are we're out there. We're not talking about that blacks. part of it. We're not talking huh? about that part of it. We're talking about the guns. Now, wasn't the one in Gilroy racially motivated? Suppose I, I yes. think they said today well, it was racially, was racially motivated. It was. It was. It was he had a. He had Mexico. religious and and other things on online that they're finding out now. They're they're digging into deeper into his, uh, into his social media stuff. But it had mostly religious and uh, anti-Semitic, uh, ramblings going on on his in his stuff. So he thinks he's going to kill Jews at a garlic festival. Well. <laughs> <laughs> There's no vampires. <laughs> yeah. Don't like grilling. I don't know. Do they? <laughs> do, do they like grilling? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? One of the last things he said is go. What did he say? He said uh, in one of his Facebook posts, "Go spend your money on worthless shit at the garlic festival." Oh, oh yeah, said. yeah. So he was unhappy with the quality of the food. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he didn't like vampires. I don't know. Wow. Hey. Wow. But anyway, you know, but I mean, here here we have this 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 situation uh and we're all not stupid here, although, you know. <laughs> uh I am, but the rest of you aren't. Uh we aren't stupid, but yet we among us cannot come up with any kind of an idea on how we take care of the situation. You know, it, 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 it seems that other countries have handled the situation. They don't have the same. And what is it about America that we have this insanity about guns that causes us to do this? I mean, per capita, there are more guns in Canada than there are here. But yet there are less deaths per capita because of guns. In fact, wow. it's virtually uh, unheard of. You know, they have universal health care. <laughs> yeah. So at least so they, they can get mental help. Or or if they get shot, they can get to the hospital really fast. Yeah. Uh, yes, Phil. Uh, Dan was next. Oh, Dan was next. Okay, Dan. Well, uh, I hate to uh, dispute your fact, but there are. I think per capita we have the most guns. There are more guns than people here, and it's way down for the. For the next, um, I believe per capita, one. per capita, no. Canada has no. more guns, well, mainly mainly I'm because sure it is, is I don't know. mainly because be maybe mainly uh, because it US is a very more guns than people. Well, wait a minute, Dan, it, it, because I, I believe it, it, they have more guns per capita, but it has a lot to do with the fact they are a very rural society yeah. for the most part. Right, they're hunters. Yeah, and yeah. they're hunters they're, and you know, whatever. And, and so you know, a lot of people, a lot of people just have guns in Canada to keep pests and rodents away. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I have, I have a uh, suggestion. Yeah. You know, everybody says they want uh, universal health care. They want free health care. They they want everybody to have health care. Why don't you start with mental health care? Give it free to everybody in this country that needs it, and see oh. if that. Uh, is a good precursor to your single payer health care. So if, if free mental health uh, care is is available to all, will that change uh, society? And maybe that's your first step to bringing on universal single payer. Um, Not uh, a bad suggestion, Phil. Yeah, I agree yes. with that. Uh, Scott, no, he was being sarcastic. Obviously, I was not being sarcastic, Scott. You were, uh, but. It, um, it, Dan I'm is, Dan is correct, Alex. Huh? Dan is correct. The, the United States has 120 guns per every 100 persons. 120 per every 100. Really? Okay. I got 10. Yeah. yeah. And in and in Canada, <laughs> it's 34 guns per per 100. So yeah. the, the U.S. has almost uh, uh, three times as many guns per capita 
as Canada. Oh, okay. And Canada's, Switzerland. Only, Canada's number seven. What is it in Switzerland? Uh, don't, doesn't everybody have a gun in Switzerland? The U.S. has half the guns in the world. We have no, 4% of the population. We have half the guns in the world. I have the other half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the the uh, the trouble is that uh, with with uh, what was the old joke about about uh, Switzerland? Uh, the only two things they ever in, that ever came out of uh, Switzerland were uh, uh, watches, was was chocolate Watch. and the cuckoo clock. You know, Swiss Army uh, knives. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah Swiss Army knives. <laughs> um, I, I wonder, does the Swiss Army ever use those knives? I, you know. They, they sell them to us. <laughs> yeah, um, but anyway, I mean, it's just it, 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 we 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 have a sickness in this country, and an obsession oh. with guns, unlike any other country, really. You know, I mean, it, it's 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 amazing, and I don't understand it. I don't understand the love of guns. I don't understand the you know the. Uh, uh, we have a love of the automobile too. Uh, I I don't think like we used to. No, you I, don't. No, I because think because you're in the you're in the no, city and no, you don't need I, one. I, I think but people, the rest I, of the world. I think people consider uh, 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 cars a what what happened to oh there um, uh, uh, cars. Uh, uh, I think most people think of them as basically as transportation. You know, Not if you're sixteen, but huh? Not if you're sixteen. Well, if you're sixteen, you can't afford a good car. But the point is that uh, that uh, uh, I think the only thing that I ever wanted in a car was an interior that I didn't get bored with because I'm spending all my time inside the car. I didn't care what the outside of the car looked like at all because I don't see that. Only other people. And if I care about that, then I want to impress people with my car. You know. That's why if I have a dent on the passenger side, it doesn't matter. I mean, I bought a, I bought a <laughs> sports car once. I bought a, a Nissan 3, a 300Z X. And uh, as I would uh, drive down the street, kids would give me the OK sign. That was pretty and cool. I did, and I didn't give a shit. I, I really didn't give a shit. I got the car because I got a good deal on it, you know. And and so I, you know, left the the uh, uh, the, sh the showroom with the goddamn thing. But I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I never cared really about the car I was driving. I cared about the interior. I cared that I wasn't going to get bored with driving it. But. That's just that's just the same. It's the same as guns. guns. People like guns because they're guns. They collect them. They like them because they're guns. People like cars because they're cars. You know, but, I, I like cars just because of their old cars and stuff like that. If well, you'd ask me, I would think everything about cars. Well, I mean, here's the thing I don't get about guns, okay? And, and, and uh, uh, Charlene, it's getting very annoying. I'm sorry. I bought a tripod. Look, I bought a tripod. Are you doing, are you doing a gymnastics? You bought a tripod today, but the tripod doesn't <laughs> seem to be. I didn't assemble it yet, though, to put it up. Sorry. Oh, I, I see. Okay. You're well, doing somersaults. <laughs> well, well if, you're, if you're doing it for good effect, go ahead. Uh, continue. All right, I'll I'll go to close-ups on people. Anyway, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I I have a whole thing about guns that aesthetically I don't understand them. You know, I I don't find them aesthetic. I don't find them uh, worth uh, uh, even even talking about in an aesthetic way. To me, they're a hard piece of steel. You would if you yeah. owned or shot them and light and, and enjoyed but using I them. I don't, Phil, and I'm telling you why I don't, because aesthetically I find them displeasing and I find them scary. Here. Uh, just like me and uh, what do they call those uh, games, uh, the video games. I've never I never play video games. The yeah. last video game I played was uh, yeah. was uh, yeah. Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. Well, the last one I played it's was a, Tomb Raider. It's a taste. Uh, Someone has to like it to, to like it. The last yeah. one I played was Tomb Raider, and boy, I kill a lot of pixels, you know. Uh, yes, Patrick. My very first gun I received on my holy first communion. Well, oh, wow. on your holy first communion? Yeah, you praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. <laughs> God. Yeah, and I got a rifle in the afternoon. That was, that was the gift that I got from an uncle of mine. That was my first uh, first weapon that I owned. Mm -hmm. 
Be because uh, when I was a kid, you know, you get, uh, Jews get bar mitzvahed, and I never knew a kid who got a gun for a bar mitzvah. Got a fountain pen. Got a fountain pen, yeah. You know, but, you know, guns, I don't know. It didn't seem like a, like a great idea. Um, but, it, you know, I mean, uh, what did you... Uh, I was complaining about the press in this whole thing and, and how they go to these events and they send Lester Holt to anchor the news from El Paso. Like, we're going to be impressed by that. Look, he had to go to El Paso. He, w he went to El Paso. I, 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 all he did was annoy people, you know. And back up traffic, you know. Back up traffic, yes, Patrick. The biggest complaint I have about the media is we shouldn't be naming the killers. We should be naming the victims mm -hmm. and remembering who the victims were, mm -hmm. not the killers. Yeah. That and that was something that the uh, Prime Minister of uh, New Zealand did. You know, it's, you don't know the name of that person. I mean, yeah. most people don't because it's not publicized. And she, the first thing she said was like, I'm not going to name the name of that person. That was wonderful. But, you know, our media being how it is, you know, because media cares about money more than anything else. So, Well, how do you feel about them going into a town like El Paso? And then taking a lingering shot of somebody as they're reciting how bad they feel about their loved one having died and crying and breaking down emotionally. And the camera just keeps rolling and the close up on their face. I, it, it, that's so bad. That's such and bad And then taste. asking them how they feel, you know, for Christ's sakes, leave them alone. It's, yeah. 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 Have they, they been doing thing. that for years, ever I since know, there was it's media? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Your son just died. How do you feel about that, man? Or, or, like, or if they finally get calmed down, they say, well, you know, how do you feel? You know, and then they just start them back up again. Well, does yeah. anybody remember the time in the Bay Area where I think it was Channel 7, there was a guy who I suppose somehow had his penis cut off by a railroad train on a railroad track. What? I don't know. How, <laughs> how do you do don't that? Don't ask me how that happened. I have no answer for it. Uh, oh, we just lost. Uh, really long dick. Yeah, I was thinking the same huh? thing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, and they took a shot of the penis on the railroad track. <laughs> a lingering shot hilarious. of it. And I think that was the last time they ever did it because they got a lot of complaints. What, oh, wow. Was there anything left of it? Uh, you know, yeah. getting hit by a train. There's usually know. nothing left. I've seen people that have been hit by trains. You know, they uh, because R Richmond had a bunch of train tracks over near Carlson Boulevard, yeah. and we would, you know, find that there was a dead body, and we'd have to respond. And these guys, they look totally normal, especially if they were in a car, but you know, their like liver was in their throat uh, because was, of the amount of energy. It was it was like a quarter, you know. It was flat, you know. We used to put quarters on the train tracks yeah. and go find them. They were flat. It, well, you know, people in a <laughs> let's say in a car, if the energy hit the car from the train and the person was in the car, it, it just totally uh, threw all their organs all inside their body. And you know, the people that got hit by a train that weren't in a the car, there wasn't much left. It was just you know like raw meat, like a piece of beef jerky, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Hmm. They're raw meat. <laughs> yeah, so the guys, the guy Schlong, the guy Schlong couldn't have, you know, uh, endured yeah. that. That's yeah, how was not using Viagra or something? How far away was it? I can't what? even imagine that. Oh, what? How do you get in the position where? You... Uh, where was you know, it, Alex? It must have been around Burlingame uh, or Sam Bruno or somewhere. Something you know? like that. They get yeah. hit there too. Uh, assume the position, uh, yeah. but. You know, uh, in Palo Alto and Burlingame, the tracks are right next to the street. Mm -hmm. and it always get... happened around Burlingame. Yeah, so they're I always getting hit. It's always happening. Cow train. You know, they, they, they got a uh, cow. What are those cow things that they put in the front of trains? train? Uh, the cow scooper cow, or cow something? Cow catchers. I don't cow think they have. I don't we think used to go up there and we used to put stuff on the tracks all the time. It was right Pennies. by the high school. And we'd put shit on the tracks all the time and then run and then go see what, what it would do. I, yeah. I've put a penny on a track. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, huh. yeah, I've done that. Put penny beer cans and shit on the tracks. 
And then when the train goes off the track and the police are looking for you. Oh, we were running. Because <laughs> they'd tell you, oh, you're going to derail the track with that penny, you know. Yeah. The penny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Penny's going to derail a train. Yeah. Uh, I've had, I, I, I like trains, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of trains here in Middletown. What do you think yeah. about about the uh, the political response to this situation on both Can sides? I, uh, yeah. I, the yeah. Democratic response was to try to raise money uh, oh. over the, um, the the bodies, and they, the bodies were still warm, and they were trying to raise money. Oh. Well, f money for Alex. what? Uh, for uh, political candidates. Everybody, everybody does that. Public raise money from the NRA. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Right thing, let, let, so. Ch Charlie wanted to say something. Charlie, what? The Republicans raise money from the NRA all the time. All these Republicans getting on TV talking about the Democrats have got millions of dollars from the NRA. And probably when yeah. something like this happens and people are complaining about guns, they say to them, hey, you better give us some money because we're going to protect your asses. Yeah. Alex, you didn't uh, mention what Beto O'Rourke said. Oh shit! What did Beto say? I, I don't care. Yeah, I agree. Uh, with no, you. but I mean, he was great. He, um, I mean, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not quoting exactly, but he said something like, um, you know, he doesn't want to take this shit from Trump anymore. You know, that he doesn't <laughs> take ownership for the things he says and uh, gets people Better excited. Than uh, were you talking about Beto O'Rourke? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. God! He, he basically he, he, told the press, "What kind of fucking question was that?" Right, he did say <laughs> of that. Of course, he's a racist. He's been yeah. a racist from the start. But, you know, <laughs> but uh, a lot uh, of people uh, really Phil liked put, that. Uh, Phil, you know, he 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 Phil? said something about Trump's responsibility. Oh, NRA! Look, look, look at Phil's hat. Uh, Phil, um, say, yeah. Yeah. say something, NRA. Phil, so they can see uh, it. Oh, okay, yeah, I. Uh, Put my NRA hat on for Charlie. Yeah, uh, and, and, I, and I and I put I put on my political hat. There we go. Before I make a bag, can I ask a hat? And this uh, is I got that too. I, this is. Can I ask a question but, of Phil? I didn't want to incite you guys. Uh, this is my my Macaca hat. Uh, this is Make China Great Again hat. So you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it was Dan or Patrick first. Patrick, Dan. No, let me go, go to ahead, Patrick, because Dan was talking earlier. Yes, Patrick. Patrick. Well, I wore a hat to support. Great hat, by the it's way. Very simple. I have it rolled it's up. Supporting Australia. Oh, that's Australian, isn't it? Well, no, it, it, it's a boonie hat. It's a military U.S. hat. Really? But I have it wrapped up on the sides. Oh. But it's the same kind of hat as what Phil had, except... More stylish looking because I. I thought he was taking a pee. I didn't think he was getting the hat. He's yeah. going for the pee again. Oh. I was gonna ask Phil what uh, what oh, benefits God. you get from uh, your NRA membership besides the hat. Uh, like, well, uh, what benefits? Bullets? You get they. Uh, you, I get a magazine once a month. I think a, a, mag a magazine. How many filled with, in uh, that magazine. A, 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 how many rounds in that <laughs> magazine? Yeah, a <laughs> hundred <laughs> rounds. <laughs> Why uh, do you still have a hat closet? You've got you a know, hat closet over there? Uh, but they, I got uh, cubby holes with hats. Uh, and I, I shove them all in one cubby. How many but, of them are there? And are we going to see all of them tonight? No, I, I just uh, was getting the uh, the other one uh, so I could do it like Patrick. Uh, <laughs> you know? Hey, there, now, there's, a, there's a band in this that I can put over, but... Uh, I, I wear it as a sun hat. It keeps the sun off my ears and the back of my neck. That's uh, and, and so when I go shooting. It, it makes you look yeah. like an old man. Yeah, when uh, I go shooting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay uh, let me bring up something I learned about the NRA today. I didn't know this, but the NRA has has um, NRA has put laws in in 45 out of the 50 states where. States have have laws in their books that say cities cannot make their own gun laws. That's in 45 of the 50 yep. states. That's the NRA is totally behind that, and that's what the NRA is up to. That's because what hopefully it's a the federal. You know, it's the constitutional right 
you you can't you know take that right away. It's part of the Constitution. But no, but according to you, you can take that right away if you want to take there's it away from somebody of, who's crazy. Of, you know, if you're a mental or a liberal, you can take their guns away. <laughs> oh boy. The yeah, um, Patrick, I didn't know what that band was for that was in the hat. It's for putting the sides up. <laughs> and looking like a real douchebag. You really look like a douchebag that way. Well, I get, there's another one that goes under the chin. Yeah? There, there's two. Yeah, you, know, you got. Yeah, and this is a Canadian one. This this hat is made in Canada. It's a Tilly, authentic Tilly. Right. Made right. in Canada. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I think my the NRA is a terrorist organization. Well, I'm now a life member. <laughs> yep. Well, well, it is. Well, he he. I, it might he as well tell be. tell him why you became a life member, Phil. <laughs> tell him to why. piss you off. No, not to piss <laughs> me off. Why did you become a life member? Uh. Uh, the uh, well, you, if if I live long enough to pay off the membership, because they only take uh, twenty five dollars a quarter, that's a hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. So that means it's going to take fifteen years for me to actually get the card that says life member, because I didn't give them no, fifteen hundred. Weren't, weren't you supposed to get something else as well? You're supposed oh, to get yeah, a jacket. yeah, yeah. I thought I was going to get the leather jacket. The jacket. Yeah. And, and then the what ended up happening <laughs> was. Unless you give them the fifteen hundred up front, you don't get the jacket. But I did get the hat <laughs> and the magazine subscription. Well, thank God they're hemorrhaging money, and NRA TV is gone, and the oh, NRA is hopefully yeah. on its last legs. Alex, did you notice NRT, <laughs> NRA TV is gone? Yeah, that's what I heard. They're also going broke too. The NRA, well, yep. they're in a lot of trouble. Financially, uh, yes. That's why I became a life member uh, to do oh, my. Oh yeah, Bill's gonna save the NRA. <laughs> yes, my hundred dollars a year. Patrick. Yeah, I, I was a member of the NRA for many years, and during the Clinton administration, when um, it was proposed to have trigger locks, uh, mm -hmm. when you'd buy a weapon, you would have to buy a trigger lock. Well, the NRA spent so much money or I should say wasted so much money to try to counteract trigger lock, which all it was was the ten dollar thing that you bought with your weapon. Nobody's gonna come in your house and see if you're using it. And they wasted millions and millions and millions of dollars against it. And I thought, you know, if you guys are gonna waste it on that and not on things that matter at the time, then I I sent back my membership card and I told them to stick it because I didn't want my money wasted on something that, to me, was a logical thing to have. Mm -hmm. And they were so against that, I could only imagine what it would be in the future. And, well, I'm glad I... I mean, I haven't been a member for like 20 years, so... Um, Why would they I remember it's, that? Yeah. yeah, is anybody here um, um, come up with... Uh, 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 doing anything in any financial way about this situation? In other words, are you giving money, Phil, to the NRA? Well, you did. Or Dan, or did you send money to some uh, something to help people in El Paso or whatever? I mean, not uh, not yet, but I'm going to. And uh, and I have a, a friend. We uh, we meet up um, from time to time. There's a restaurant about a block and a half away from where. The, the shooting takes place. They got great sandwiches. We're going to go up there and kind of a support the area kind of thing. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, well, you live you Skyline live, Chili? Wait a minute. You live, no, it's you, not Skyline it's, Chili. It's hold. called Dublin Pub. They have awesome, wait a minute. You, amazing wait a minute. You live, sandwiches. You live where, uh, Dan? I live in Middletown, Ohio, the home of that bitch Candace Keller who wrote all that shit yeah. today. Hopefully we'll be forced <laughs> to resign. What, what did she write? I was trying to figure out who she was. I can read it to you if you want to bear with me reading. Is it just quick? Well, it's a decent paragraph. Well? I can give you the gist whenever I find this here. Beat. I'm buying okay, Gilroy it's Strong t not that for much different from what each. Trump said, but believe it or not, it's even stupider. Okay, I'll start reading and you can stop me when you feel that it's appropriate. Yeah. Okay, Candace Keller. After every mass shooting, the liberals start the blame game 
why not place the blame where it belongs? The breakdown of the traditional American family. Thank you, transgender, homosexual marriage, and drag queen. Okay, active. you don't have to read anymore. I understand why they're trying okay, to get rid of yeah. it. <laughs> you know where it's going. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, and, 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 and even mentioned Obama, and of course Colin Kaepernick, because Colin Kaepernick. Well, is, what, is, so what, is what, what is her position? Shit. What is her position uh, in uh, in uh, politics in your area? She is my. Well, not my, because she doesn't represent me, but she's the state representative in Ohio for Middletown. And you already know more enough about Middletown after the last couple of days yeah. that uh, you know where I live, right? Yeah. yeah. I live in a shit town is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what position does she have? And a you should have said. Shithole country. What? I'm in a shithole city Stop. in a shithole country. But by the way, I, that I, was the thing. Well, Didn't you find that amazing? That little fact about uh, about uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, about about the Walmart that the shoppers there, about eight of them that were killed, were from Mexico. That they come oh, over, really? they come over the border to go shop at Wal at Walmart. Well, All right. Now my question is. We're trying to stop border migration, and yet you can go if you want. Oh, I'm just going to Walmart. Oh, okay, you can go through. I don't see I how they the do it. You know Walmart that the, has all in it. <laughs> you know that the peso today is almost 20 pesos to the dollar? Uh, last time I was in Mexico, which was a long time ago, it was 10 pesos to the dollar. And, I, and so, all you know, all of a sudden, the dollar is worth double what it used to be worth. So that means that when people come from Mexico to buy in the United States, yeah, but, they but, have pesos, but, but, they convert yeah, them to dollars. But you didn't answer Everything my question. twice as much. I'm, it, you didn't answer my but question. they don't have a wall in the, Walmart there. Uh, 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 they don't have a what? They probably don't have a Walmart yeah. there. So they, yeah. well, they probably cross don't. and they spend their money and they go back. Well, you know something? Tax, you know something? Expensive. You know what I'm willing to spend money for? To build the Walmart. <laughs> build the Walmart. Well, build the Walmart. Build the Walmart. Taxes. Build the Walmart. Yeah. They're paying right. sales tax. And they're yes, going uh, back. Charlene. Oh, okay. Build the Walmart. Charlene I'm, has. I'm ready. Charlene. I um, saw a crawl over the weekend, and it said something to the effect that uh, Mexico is very angry that these Mexican, uh, you know, people from Mexico yes. were killed. Yeah. And they're thinking about like uh, bringing some kind of action. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because they're thinking about extraditing. But still, why not? They still, if, if we're talking they about, about citizens, if, if you're talking about the porous border and all of that, these people are just coming over to shop at Walmart and go back into Mexico. You know, now not that I want to see them not be able to, but I mean, how does that kind of coincide with your desire to stop porous borders? You know, yes, they don't. Have a Walmart down there. Do you have a Walmart Stay card? Down, yes, I, I do. Now. Okay, you're welcome into the United States. Forget the passport. A Walmart card will do. Yeah. Uh, and and doesn't that mean they're coming over and paying sales tax too? Yeah. I'm sure they weren't yeah. going through the desert uh, while they raped the people that were with them and then crawled, oh, uh, crawled right, through right, the right, brush right, yeah, and over yeah, over yeah. broken down fences yeah. to go to Walmart. Yeah. It's they a, came yeah. in legally. And don't don't forget the right turn. Yeah, they yeah, came in don't forget the right turn. You know, they, they probably came in through a border crossing. Okay, calm down, Phil. Calm down. You know. Uh, and then they got shot. Okay. Oh. Calm down, Phil. Settle. Settle. Take a deep breath. Um, I'm, I'm good. Gee, you had to go pee, She's huh? Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you're on a juice diet. Uh, on a juice diet, yeah. Yeah, that's all I've had for the last uh, day and a half, actually almost two days, because um, I've had my four juices a day today. Oh and uh, well, I'm not worrying about my prostate anymore because I don't have a, a thing for until uh, November. But uh, now I'm going to the dentist, and I think it's going to cost me several thousand dollars, even with my uh -huh. insurance. But is, well, what happened? She, well, she started looking at my mouth. And she said, "Well, you need that filled. And you need that filled. And you need that filled." It, and that I one, my the only thing was the mouth was big. No, no, <laughs> no. And, and, uh. and so I'm not going to be able to get the implant yet. But I had to have the teeth cleaned first, and they had to do a deep cleaning, and then I had to get the uh, 
Then she ch checked the thing. She said, well, we have two really bad cavities here that are ne near nerves. So she took care of those. They were in the front. And then another one in the front. Now she's got to go to one in the back, which she may have to root canal. So I could wind up spending, because I've used up almost all of my $2,500 of insurance. What, money. What, th what does that tell you when a woman says, I'm not touching that thing until you clean it? Yeah, right. Well, you know, I, 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 when I'm through, I'm going to have and I'm going to leave three of the fillings for next year till when the when the money rejuvenates itself in my, you know, so but I still may have to put out a thousand or so, maybe more for, you know, this tooth if it needs a root canal. But I don't know yet. It's just that that's a cost that we have to talk about someday too is that if we want to have universal health care i think dental care should be included in that and mental health care as well yeah, i think it you should start bernie's with plan. mental health care they both are in bernie's plan i think yeah. mental health care is is tantamount to uh having a, a safe society Mental you know? health care, yes, but then if you're going to give them free mental health care, why don't we throw in free regular health care, too? Phil? Hey, why don't you throw in the kitchen sink? Yes. I, I give yeah. you mental health. That's it. Oh, well, uh, thanks, See if it works. Thank you very much, Phil. See, see, uh, see if the, the crazy people will go and get, and, and, and get uh, uh, service. No. Okay. Maybe if they're in good health, they may not want to kill us. Uh, Scott? Yes, they do. Any last words yeah. tonight that... About this whole thing, I mean, are you uh, are you at a loss for words over it? No, I'm, I'm looking up bulletproof vests. I want to buy one, so I'm safe. When I go to <laughs> Do you journey. know they have? They get bulletproof backpacks for your yes. kids. They sell yeah. those too. They sell bulletproof yeah, backpacks. But but they they don't they won't stop a, a high velocity bullet. Yeah, they only stop a. Oh, uh, they need yeah. something stronger. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm I'm looking for some new church clothing. Yeah. <laughs> Really? They, what? Yeah, they have bulletproof. I'm bulletproof. gonna show up in a bulletproof vest. Just see what the priest says. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, um, like two hundred nine dollars. Any last words, Charlene? I'm going to the people who haven't talked that much. Charlene. Well, you never asked me what I thought about what we should do. Oh, I thought I you answered should, it. I think that um, we should, you know, take the guns away. You know, have gun control. Mm -hmm. With the assault, you know, weapons. Yeah. I don't think that we should try to con control uh, the people because of psychiatric and all that. How about you, uh, uh, Tony? Uh, any last words? You know, uh, I just st uh, strengthen the background checks. And you know what? we got to take those automatic machine gun with 80 rounds, whatever the hell. Take them off and the, the market. They don't need that. Yeah. We don't need any of that stuff. And, and yeah, I, I, I think... Uh, I, 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 most Americans are for background checks, and most yeah. Americans are against the the assault rifles. Right. Uh, they, no. No. Most Americans are for background no, checks. No. 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 Assault, assault rifles as well, Phil. It was yeah, something that's... like uh, 65, 70 percent of the public that's been polled. How do they let the ban expire under under Clinton? It's the Republicans in the Senate and Congress. It was Clinton. Yeah. The ban expired. And the NRA. So, so, no, and what was their sunset provision yeah, the in fix, there anyway? The, the fix Bush. was uh, fix was Bush. in with the NRA, you know. So yeah, the NRA is. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they get defunded. I hope those Parkland kids just strangle <laughs> that organization to death. Yeah. Hey, there's the theme, folks. Oh, wow. Well, mm -hmm. I knew it would be a lively show tonight, yeah. and I was right. Uh, thank you, uh, Scott. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Dan. Thanks to Charlie, as always. Tony, thank you. Patrick, great to see you again. Kevin, always nice to have you dropping yeah. by. And if all of you will give a uh, big wave goodbye, uh, I shall give also the same good wave goodbye to you, too. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the, uh, that's the uh, citizen panel, and they're on their way to... Uh, oh, I don't know. Go shop at Walmart and get shot. I don't know. But anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. And uh, then tomorrow night at uh, 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time, we got a little sports show called The Arena with the franchise MC. And then right after that, it's uh, 
Damien, he's back again. 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night at 10. I'll be back here, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.